On the southern fringes of the Sahara Desert lives one of the most extraordinary tribes on Earth. They're despised by many of their neighbors and struggle to exist in a hostile landscape. But for the Wadabi nomads, beauty is almost as important as survival. Every year, they gather from all over the desert to hold a unique beauty contest. The competitors are men, and women choose their lovers from the lineup. The Wadabi have kept their ancient way of life for thousands of years, remote from urban forces. They live in the Sahal region of West Africa. The Sahal stretches between Senegal in the west and Chad in the east. At its heart is Niger, a vast land of 500,000 square miles, only half of which is habitable. There is only one short and erratic rainy season and for most of the year, the Sahal is like a blazing furnace. In this harsh environment, the Wadabi eke out a living as cattle herders, constantly on the move, looking for new pasture. Life in the desert is dirty and hard, but they believe they are the most beautiful people on Earth. No self-respecting Wadabi herdsman would be without his compact mirror. Wearing makeup is part of their ethnic identity. It's also worn to attract women, especially at the Garawal, the annual beauty contest which marks the end of the rainy season. The isolated location and date are kept secret until just before the event. It's the highlight of the year, lasts for seven days and nights, and is an opportunity for men and women from different groups to get together. There are approximately 65,000 Wadabi in Niger. They travel in small family groups, moving every few days, looking for fresh pasture for their zebu cattle. They're fiercely proud of their nomadic way of life and the special bond they have with their animals. This Wadabi family has been travelling since dawn. They're heading towards Ingul, where, at this time of year, they're sought for their cattle. It's 46 degrees centigrade, 115 degrees Fahrenheit. The group are getting tired and they decide to set up camp. Quinchi Riga and his friend Mina Gondi are drinking tea with a cousin who's arrived from a neighboring group. He tells them that the location of the Garawal has been announced. Quinch is looking forward to it. Quinch 
Pernice show di bawah ini. Shamne ada naj, bawah ini yovre. Benjuji jalan lep enjero. Kedemi abot ab enjahi. Jero. Tak got amalai di jahi jero. Daft daft dia di jahi jahi. Nakan jumpa ringgit gitu mihi jero ni. Their wives are also looking forward to the year's main event. Ito si da inon na na ingal na nata hiya. Yaro ko si baya bera abong gadon si. Esa yung jawas at un lokasyon si. Ma in in tuyan na da yaro ko view ko da. Mina's wife Mariama is getting excited too. Tulam para si matasa yata hiya na di. For the moment, however, Quincy and his wife Yaya have another important event on their minds. Quincy is taking a second bride. With no walls between them in the desert, the three will share their lives together. Bye, ko misa banda kana mukagad. Bye, ko. De matche si nam bye so kawi mudau ko ta kaman hira ko. Akane bye so ma in matchi sin sin. Bye, ko. Gelle dan wash. Would Derby women have relative freedom and mobility within marriage? Unhappily married women can elope with a new husband. Wadabi means the people of the taboo, because to remain Wadabi they must adhere to strict codes relating to behaviour and appearance. Women divide their hair into segments and sport a big top knot at the front, which they remove when they're older. Men braid their hair into intricate shapes and often wear eyeliner even into old age. Girls are cut with razors when they're babies and charcoal is sprinkled in the wound to form tattoos. Face packs of minerals are worn to improve the complexion. Even the way they set up their camp adheres to strict rules. Women lay out their beds north to south according to rank and erect a table on which they display their possessions. Everything has its place, and every two or three days, it's loaded onto the back of a donkey or an ox, and they move on. The Wadabi are among the last nomads in Africa. Severe droughts have dramatically reduced their herds. Climate change and the spread of agriculture are forcing growing numbers of Wadabi into towns like this one to look for food and their ancient way of life is under threat. Janari Husseini, the head of the group, is concerned about their future. When you ask me, I'm going to go to the house and I'm going to go to the house and I'm going to go to the house. I'm going to go to the house and I'm going to go to the house. After the recent droughts, there were stories of men who'd lost all their cattle and, unable to accept it, had carried on herding as if their animals were still alive. The mutum day, Garia Berry Gardens. Kaida Baka, the Kumi Baka. In Gayamaka. 
They dislike killing or selling their cattle and generally only use them for milking. Quincy has 15 animals and tomorrow Yaya will have to share them with her husband's new bride. Rain is on its way. The air contains particles of red sand from the Sahara and casts an orange hue. Gaia fell in love with Quincy two years ago at the Garawal. And they chose to stay together. This type of union is called Tigal, a marriage made from love. The new marriage is different. It was arranged by Quinch's parents when he was very small. Would Darby call a marriage arranged by the parents Cobgul? <laughs> The camp's looking forward to celebrating Quinch's new marriage. Mama. Yaya waits for the arrival of the new bride while food is being prepared. The wedding guests are here at last. The visitors are welcomed by the group, but in Wadabi culture, they must observe humility and avoid looking directly at each other. Contact with other people in the desert is a rare event. Later, the bride, Fatima, arrives with her family. She was betrothed to Quincy by her parents when she was seven. Now she's 15 and he's decided to claim her. Quincy can see the benefits of having two wives. Janari, the head of the group, welcomes the visitors and invites them to eat. Men and women eat separately. 
With Derby are far away from modern communications, and news is spread by word of mouth. <laughs> While the elders wait for their food, the groom is eating with his friends. Tonight, the men have gathered to agree on the terms of the marriage. It is customary for the groom to give three of his cattle to the bride's family. The women will not be included tonight, but it is they who will choose the cattle in the morning. Mm. <laughs> 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 It's time for the women to choose their animals. They know a beautiful man when they see one, and they can also spot a beautiful cow. <laughs> Fatima, the new bride, will not sleep with Quincy for a few months until after the third and final cow is handed over to her parents. <laughs> Finally, the women are satisfied. Fatima will go back to her parents' camp tonight, and Yaya will have Quincy to herself for the next two months. The following day, the weather changes dramatically. Suddenly the sky darkens, the cattle seem disturbed. Sandstorms can approach in minutes. The calves are tethered before the storm hits. The Wudabi have a special way of coping with physical hardship and emotional upheaval. They call it manyal, a sort of patient acceptance. Manyal is part of an ancient and complex behavioral code which has endured the spread of Christianity and Islam. Their tradition is crucial to them. It's their identity. It means freedom and security. 
Part of this is pulaku. It is similar in meaning to our word chivalry. The Wadabi must demonstrate patience, self-control, mental discipline, prudence, modesty and respect for others. They must also show semtende. There are many taboos in Wadabi culture, but perhaps the strangest of them all is the one which forbids parents from ever speaking to their firstborn child. Quinch's aunt, Zenabu, never spoke to her son until he was an adult. One of the effects of this custom is that children are integrated very quickly into the wider family and lavished with affection. Today, Janari will oversee an important family event. His nephew, Gorsi, is 15 years old. He's about to become a panyo, a young man. His father has given him his first cow, and tonight the group will celebrate. <laughs> Gorse's relations from neighboring camps have made the long journey to the party. One of the visitors is Gorse's father. <laughs> to celebrate Gorse's coming of age, Quincy has arranged for the men to perform a dance. But first, they'll let him in on some beauty secrets. As Gorsi enters manhood, he's learning how to transform himself for future beauty contests. Although physical beauty is very important to the Wadabi, they also value inner beauty or togu. Parin jini kada 
waje mtu mdafari ya yuon kaya safa mai ya jera jichinshi ya zama sap ya yichiba wada ya gaishi ya naso kuma akwe farinjini na gado Quincy takes Gorsi through his paces in the Yashi, a dance intended to seduce women. The men are very relaxed, saving their energies for the Garawal festival where they will attempt to dance for up to seven days and where women will choose the best performers, taking them into the bush for a night of romance. Gorsi watches the dancers and joins in with the hypnotic swaying. Tired after his dancing lesson, Gorsi returns to the camp and is excused the evening's herding duties. Staring into his compact mirror, he's clearly happy with his new reflection and delays removing his makeup for as long as possible. That evening, the women get together to celebrate Gorsi's coming of age. <laughs> Meanwhile, around the men's campfire, Janari gives Gorsi some advice. <laughs> Now a man, Gorsi reflects on a busy day and looks forward to the time when he can dance for the girls at the Garawal. are on the move again. Quincy and his friend Mina are eager to get going as the Garawal starts in two days' time. But unfortunately, they've had a setback. Mina's wife, Mariama, has fallen ill. Mm. <laughs> Although Mariama isn't well, the group must move today. The Wadabi never let their cattle overgraze pasture land and have taboos about the days on which they can travel. would rather camp on sand than grass, 
as it offers greater protection against scorpions and snakes. While the beds are being set up, people rally round to help Mariama. Mina is an expert on herbal remedies. They also use herbal treatments for their cattle and burn special markings over affected areas. They believe in supernatural forces such as genies, shape-shifting spirits that take the form of humans or animals. The tribe are well known for their magical powers and potions. They wear talismans, mixtures of plants and minerals sewn into small leather packets and attached around the body. Junari's brother, Kabu, explains. Quinchi has a headband containing powerful herbs with amazing properties. One, the sanda, the takobi, magani, see the chiwankai, look at Komutum and I saw him in the theater, buy Komi Abu Sayakoma, Ojiki. Hakanamuchi, Tunda, Gadumun, inform me Hakan and Saikagani, in Guinea Mubezo, Tare, Saikagani, Abu Bayi, Komun Aramashi, Babu, in the Sinai, Allah Dawadam Kay, Madafari Munaje, Ojinshi Hakan. Darby's ancient and secret knowledge of herbal remedies and magic is well known amongst other tribes. This Tuareg tribesman has come to see Mina for advice. Inshallah, <laughs> The tribesman tells Mina and Quinchy of a nearby Tuareg camel race. Selling remedies can supplement the income the Wadabi received from milk. This could be a good opportunity to get a little money for the Garawal festival, and the friends decide to go. While they head off towards the camel race, back at the camp, the women are getting excited as Garawal draws near. 
Yaya is looking forward to seeing family and friends, and Mariama is feeling a lot better. Mina's herbal remedies are working. It's time to get the men's costumes ready. The women and children work hard to ensure they look their best. Quincy and Mina arrive at the Tuareg camel race. Tuareg nomads inhabit a vast area covering the middle of the Sahara and northern Sahel. They live in harmony with the Wadabi. is the most expensive beast in the desert and every Wadabi aspires to own one. Although they haven't done any business, Quincy and Mina have had a great day at the races. But on their way back to the camp, they make a big decision regarding the Garawal which won't go down well with their wives. Next morning, back at the camp, Quincy and Mina are packing to go to the Garawal. They've told their wives that they can't go with them. Janari met the mother of his seven children at the Garawal. This year, Janari isn't going to the Garawal. He's staying at home with his family. 
but Quincy is finding it difficult to get away. After some heated discussions, Mariama and Yaya decide to obey their husbands. Leaving their wives behind, Quincy and Mina have made the long track to the road where they hope to get a ride. They're in good spirits, but the morning's arguments have slowed them down, and if they don't get a lift soon, they'll miss the beginning of the festival. Over a thousand Wadabi have made their way to Chintabaradan for this year's Garawal. They've come from all over the Sahal, traveling for days to this isolated spot in the desert. Quincy and Mina have finally arrived at the event they've been waiting all year for. They meet relatives and old friends and exchange news. All over the camp, people are getting ready for the first dance. Then Quincy has a surprise. His new wife, Fatima, is at the festival with a friend. Because it is a Cobgul marriage, she won't start living with Quincy until the final ceremony in two months' time. Until then, Fatima is free to do as she chooses. <laughs> Single girls get the chance to choose lovers at the Garawal, but it's also an opportunity for unhappily married women to find a new husband. Quincy and Mina decide to get ready. Insides of old flashlight batteries make a useful but possibly harmful lipstick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
The final touch is an ostrich feather placed on the turban. And this contestant has a talisman to ward off evil words. Quincy and Mina's group get together for a warm-up. Finally, they're ready to perform their first dance. They make their way to the center of the action. Dancers believe that the chanting brings out their inner beauty, which helps to make them irresistible to women. check out the contestants. Quincy and his friends work hard to project their charms. Man's ability to roll his right eye in and out is a rare and highly rated talent. Mina uses this lip trembling technique. Women show their preferences with almost imperceptible glances and movements of the arm. The apparent lack of enthusiasm is a demonstration of modesty, or semtende. Some couples will agree with subtle body movements to meet later that evening. And the men who are not chosen will carry on dancing through the night. The Garawal lasts for seven days and nights, it's an endurance test that pushes the men to their limits. Mui ado na mui ado, sa na muje una fara jiri un mache ya zote anga ba muya na diva imai de ya gani macha si kena. Ida gani mashi iya hita jiri sa ya okay. Sa gani ni mukega. Quincy is tired. Mina dropped out a long time ago.
ina gani ce an tunda tun sheke ni yana zo ni kade ne nike kon sai borgo har da sahe After a week of almost continuous dancing, the garawal is drawing to a close. <laughs> Meanwhile, back at the camp, Yaya and Mariama are making their own entertainment. Quincy and Mina are on their way home. The festival is over, along with the end of the rainy season, and their life will return to normal. A struggle for survival and for beauty. <laughs>